I am in Florence, Italy, and I'm going to be heading inside the Basilica di Santa Croce. This is a very historic church here on the expansive Piazza di Santa Croce, where they just finished up the Calcio Fiorentino games, an annual tradition where locals play a very old-fashioned version of football. Santa Croce is essentially the Florentine Pantheon, as many of the greatest figures in the city's history are entombed here. The facade was originally just brick, but this grand neo-gothic facade was added in the early 1860s. It was designed by Niccolo Matas, who was Jewish. Now he wanted to be buried inside Santa Croce along with some of the other great artists, but they refused him because he was Jewish, so he ended up being buried just outside the church, somewhere under these steps I believe. Supposedly because they wouldn't let him be buried inside, he left his mark on the church's facade, by adding a very noticeable Star of David toward the top. Out in front of the basilica is the Monument to Dante. This sculpture of one of Italy's greatest authors was erected here in 1865 to celebrate the 600th anniversary of his birth here in Florence. I wonder if he is entombed inside Santa Croce. The construction of this church began in 1294, and it was finally completed in 1442. It is technically the world's largest Franciscan church, as it was built in the shape of an Egyptian cross, which is a symbol of Saint Francis. This really is a massive Gothic church. Alright, this is the inside of Santa Croce. We'll start making our way around the church, seeing all the grand tombs lining the walls. That top plaque seems to be a monument to Donatello. Among the tombs and monuments, there are some big old paintings. There are tomb slabs all over the floor of the church. Yes, there are people buried under these. This was a common practice in most churches. Some of these are very elaborate, and visitors can just walk over them, though I was trying to avoid stepping on them. There's some serious renovation work being done here in the church. There's a big lift in the middle of the aisle, and someone's way up there repairing the ceiling. The structure of Santa Croce has been under observation and renovation for several years now, as in 2017 a decorative stone fell 66 feet onto a visitor inside here, and it killed him. Some famous Italians are just memorialized here and not buried here, as there is a plaque to Leonardo da Vinci, who was born in Tuscany and spent time here in Florence. This plaque honors Enrico Fermi, who was originally from Rome, but he ended up at the University of Chicago, where he created Chicago Pile 1, the world's first nuclear reactor.
This is the tomb of Galileo Galilei, whose findings were oppressed by the Catholic Church during his own lifetime. Using brand new advanced telescopes, which he helped to innovate, he was the first human being to see two of Jupiter's largest moons, proving that the Earth was not special in having a moon. He also first saw the craters of the moon, sunspots, Venus's phases, and he made some other important discoveries. The church found his discoveries to be antithetical to their geocentric view, so his book was swiftly banned in 1633, and he was placed under house arrest for the rest of his life until he died in 1642. When Galileo died, he was put in a back room, basically a closet, but later on as he was proven to be right, a Medici duke decided that the heretic should be moved here into the church and provided this elaborate funerary monument as the duke tried to check the church's power. Atop the sarcophagus, there is a bust of Galileo holding his telescope. He is surrounded by allegorical figures of astronomy and geometry. That's pretty awesome. The tomb of the legendary scientist, some may call him the father of modern science, prominently displayed here in a Catholic church. This is the tomb of Gino Caponi, who was a very Catholic statesman and historian during the 19th century. And here is the tomb of Giovanni Battista Nicolini who was a poet and playwright during the Risorgimento. The skull and bones on this tomb slab is awesome. This is the tomb of Michelangelo, the legendary artist who created Renaissance masterpieces like David, the Pieta, Moses, and the Sistine Chapel. He spent much of his early life and career here in Florence, where he became very famous in his own lifetime, but he moved away to Rome, basically in exile, since he didn't like or get along with Alessandro de' Medici. After Michelangelo died on February 18th, 1564, he was buried at a church in Rome, but when Cosimo de' Medici found out about his death, he decided to bring Michelangelo's body back up here for a grand funeral and monuments. So Michelangelo's nephew was sent by the Medicis to steal his corpse from Rome, and Michelangelo was transported back to Florence, hidden in a hay bale. Back in Florence, they viewed Michelangelo's body, which supposedly had not decomposed even after several weeks. That was often said of holy bodies, so they thought he was a saint. Like Galileo, Michelangelo's entombment here and this massive funerary monument was politically motivated. Giorgio Vasari designed this tomb, which features a bust of Michelangelo Buonarroti atop the sarcophagus, and below it there are three muses, representing sculpture, painting, and architecture. Michelangelo is entombed directly across from Galileo. That's pretty cool. Right next to Michelangelo is the tomb of Dante Alighieri. Well, not really. The poet behind the Inferno was born and lived here in Florence, but he was exiled which seems to be a common theme here. He died in Ravenna in 1321, where he is actually entombed. It still can be visited. So this is just a cenotaph that was placed here in 1818. There's a sculpture of Dante wearing a laurel wreath and resting his arm on a copy of the Divine Comedy. There are also two female figures representing poetry and Italy.
This is the tomb of Vittorio Alfredi, the father of the Italian tragedy. He was a very popular 18th century playwright and tragic poet. This is the tomb of Niccolo Machiavelli, the notorious author of The Prince, which caused him to be known as the father of modern political science. He was an official in the Florentine Republic, but the Medicis did not favor him and accused him of conspiracy, so he was briefly imprisoned and then exiled, and basically placed under house arrest at his villa outside Florence, which I did visit on this trip. It was there in exile that he wrote The Prince a very interesting book intended for the Medici rulers that provides some cynical, but in many cases probably true observations and philosophies of governance. When he died in 1527, he was buried here with his family, though he was still not liked. Machiavelli was actually banned from entering this church towards the end of his life, but in the late 18th century, they built this grand tomb for him, featuring an allegorical figure of politics holding a picture of Machiavelli, This is the Annunciation of the Virgin by the famed Renaissance sculptor Donatello. He is not entombed here at Santa Croce. He's with the Medici's at San Lorenzo because he never fell out of favor with them. This is the tomb of Leonardo Bruni, a humanist from the 15th century he is known as the first to designate history into three distinct periods, the ancient, middle, and modern periods. Next to Bruni is the tomb of the composer, Gioacchino Rossini, a very popular 19th century opera composer. His most famous compositions must be the iconic William Tell Overture and the Barber of Sevilla. Here's a statue of Hugo Foscolo, a revolutionary writer and poet. There are several side chapels on the back side of the church with some awesome artwork. Many of the frescoes in here were done by Agnolo Gatti between 1387 and 1390, but there are works of many other artists as well. This is the Baroncelli Chapel, which is filled with incredible frescoes painted by Taddeo Gatti. These frescoes are technically the first true night scenes ever created in Western art.
Behind all the scaffolding is the Capella Bardi, which was fully painted by Giotto, one of the greatest early Florentine artists. Sadly, this highlight of Santa Croce has fallen into bad shape, but they are currently trying to restore it. This is the Central High Altar, surrounded by Gaudi frescoes about the legend of the True Cross. Here's a Pietà, not by Michelangelo though. This section of the church is also closed off for the time being. There is a crucifix back there that was created by a young Donatello. It was his first time using wood in sculpture but it's not visible from here. Wow, this church is astonishing and very impressive, but there is more to see. I'm now in the Museo dell'Opera Santa Croce, a museum displayed in some side rooms and chapels. That is Cimabue's Crucifixion, a 13th century masterpiece that was an innovation in humanistic iconography due to the way Jesus is positioned. This actually broke away from the Byzantine style despite the gilding. This realistic portrayal of Jesus' suffering was apparently an inspiration to great artists like Michelangelo. However, it was badly damaged during the Arno Flood of 1966. It fell in the water and lost 60% of its paint. This is the sacristy from the 14th century. This relic is supposedly a piece of St. Francis's robe. There are some more old altarpieces and panels in the room of the well and the lavabo. This is the Medici Chapel of the Novices, built around 1445 by Cosimo the Elder, and it now features some paintings. This monument contains a Madonna attributed to Donatello, 
but it's actually part of a monument to a jeweler named Francesco Lombardi. This is the Entombment of Christ by Salviati from 1548. Here's the Holy Trinity from 1592. This is believed to be the back room where Galileo Galilei was secretly buried in 1642, only to be moved to a grandiose tomb in the main church in 1717. There is a cloister on the side of Santa Croce. The highlight out here is the Capella de Pazzi, a masterpiece of Renaissance architecture. This chapel was built in 1443 and was most likely designed by the legendary architect Filippo Brunelleschi who designed the giant dome on Florence's Duomo. Brunelleschi was certainly good at designing beautiful rotundas. This is the Refectory of Santa Croce, featuring the Tree of Life by Tadio Gatti. There is also this depiction of the Last Supper by Giorgio Vasari from 1546. It was damaged by the 1966 flood. So, Santa Croce is an astounding historic church. It is not only one of the most beautiful churches I've ever been to, packed to the brim with wonderful artwork, but there are also the tombs of some of the greatest figures in history all under one roof. I thought this was incredible, and Santa Croce is definitely a must-see here in Florence. If you enjoyed this video, then please like it, share it, and subscribe to my channel. I have videos on hundreds of other historic sites, museums, churches, cemeteries, and more including a little walking tour of Florence, and an episode on the Villa Machiavelli, where he wrote The Prince. Those videos are linked in the description. Thanks for watching!